Hey guys, I'm back out here after getting rid of the turbo yuck, or most of it. I'm still a little coffee, but eh, what do you do? Uh, in the background, I'm working on these guys. So these are the finished product of the seat floor um, assemblies. There's a left and a right. Uh, it's really important when you do this work that you recognize that there is specifically a left and a right. So you're going to do one as it shows in the plan, and then you're going to do the other one the exact opposite. Look at that really carefully because it's easy to get that wrong. Um, I didn't, thankfully. But yeah, these came out really nice. Super easy. No big deal. Um, I had a bunch of questions come in uh, while I've been out. I've been out for a while. One of the questions was, did I fly in an RV-10 before I decided to build one? The answer is no, I did not. Uh, I've sat in three RV-10s at this point. I think just three. I've, I've seen a lot. Like, I've walked up and... and manhandled and touched on, on a bunch of them, but I've only sat in three RV-10s. I have flown in two of those RV-10s that I sat in um, since deciding to build one. <clears throat> the, the, I sat in Lynn's RV-10 before I, before I started my build, and that was kind of the, the impetus behind the build. I was like, wow, this is an amazing plane, and you would never know he built it had, had he not told me. So uh, no, I did not fly in one before I ordered my empennage, or even before I finished my empennage, because I, I flew in it. I flew in it uh, when I was working on my wings. So, no. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> okay, so another question that I got was, do, do I think I could do this work, building of the airplane, without having the on hangar, on airport rather, help? Um, uh, yes, absolutely. <coughs> I'm still coughing. Uh, yes, absolutely, I do. The plans are written such that, I mean, I say this all the time, it's a key. If you can put tab A and slot B over and over again, you can do this. It is not hard. It's just really repetitive. Uh, now, what is really nice is having having somebody that can come in and look over your shoulder and go, yes, that's correct. Um, I don't have anyone helping me, per se, other than my wife, who have you seen a number of times come out and run rivets and whatnot. Uh, but most likely, if you're building near an airport, you'll have an EAA chapter that you'll be able to reach out to them and say, hey, help, you know, and, and Pete, they love helping. So um, do you need help? Not really. I don't think so. I mean, in Vans, uh, they, you know, if they if you have a, a question, you just call Vans. They'll usually are they're pretty good about answering your questions or email them. There's the Vans forums. There's a whole bunch of different forums, a whole bunch of different Facebook groups. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to get kind of remote help. Um, and ultimately, there's nothing that, like, you know, my buddy Lynn or some of the other, like, other guys that come out and look, there's nothing that I couldn't communicate just by taking a picture, hey, does this look right? Uh, do you need help on site, though? Not really. Every once in a while, just to move something. But, I mean, that could be anybody. It doesn't need to be some expert. So, anyways, yes, I think you can absolutely do this. And uh, do you need on site expert help? No, I don't think so. It's nice, but you don't need it. So one of the other interesting questions I got was whether or not I thought it was risky to buy only one kit at a time. Because as you know, it took a year to build the empennage, took almost a year and a half, two years to build the wings. So what happens if you get the empennage and then a year down the road, boom, the plane's gone. You know, Vans has gone out of business. That's a risky take. Um, now, do I think that's going to happen with Vans Aircraft? Not really. It's a big company, right? And they have a lot of aircraft out there. So I think they make enough money that they're going to be around. So you could buy your, your empennage kit today and probably in two or three years or six months, whatever, however long it takes you to build it, the rest of the kits are going to be there. Now, that compatibility is the next issue. The neat thing about Vans, as I understand it, and maybe someone at Vans or someone here can correct me, but if you order version, you know, three of the empennage, they have that in their computer so that when you order version, order the, the fuselage, they know it has to match up with the one you've ordered, as I understand it. Uh, if that is incorrect, please someone correct me down in the comments below. But um, no, I didn't really have any fear that Vans was going to go away and I wasn't going to be able to get all the parts. Uh, I think they're a big enough company that you're going to be okay. Now, could you order all the, all the kits at one time? Absolutely, but you'd have a bunch of boxes sitting in the corner for a while because it takes time to build this stuff. Anyways, I hope that answers your question. Okay, I've been out here for hours at this point. Um, 
going on four and a half, looks like, according to the timer that turns off these lights. Uh, one of the things I worked on was these mid rail seat supports. Um, and you know, they came out like they're supposed to. I did not, so you can see I'm kind of cleaning up the top with the, with the uh, bench grinder over there a little bit. I didn't do this side yet because I'm missing one of my uh, nut plates. I used them all up apparently. Uh, I used like four extra over there and I remember I even destroyed one of those inadvertently. Uh, so I'm actually a nut plate short. So I'm gonna have to order some more nut plates. They're cheap, you can order them by the pound, a couple bucks. So I'm gonna order a nut plate and then that will go on there and I'm not sure, it goes back there somewhere I think. So uh, that's something I have to order before I can actually finish this part. Good thing this part isn't needed right now. Uh, so I can actually put it aside and come back to it later. And then I've been working on putting these uh, landing gear mount in here against the spar and and wow <laughs> you know you had to put the floor plates back in which was a pain in the ass uh, there's this piece right here which I think this is part of the steering system uh, and and they have you bolt it all in but if you have this top or bottom it's not the bottom most bolts the upper of the bottom two bolts if you have it bolted in you cannot get this floor plate in so I had to undo that, put the floor plate in, and the bolt for that's just sitting in here for now. I clicked this down so that I then could get <clears throat> all the pieces lined up to do these two holes. So these are a couple number 12s right here. So these are nice big beefy holes. It'll be I'll be interested to see how that's assembled. Like what, you know, is that a screw, nut plate? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what's going on there. Uh, because I don't know how you're going to affix that from the underside. And then same thing here. There's a, a piece you have to fabricate that goes in between this piece and this piece. And it is a tight fit getting it in there. But once it's in there, it's right here. And I'm going to have to put the whole skin on here, which shows me what those four holes are. Then I'm going to have to drill, you know, start at thir number 30 and then up drill it, I think, to probably a number 12 is my guess. Same as these. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do next is put all that on there to do that. And then once that's done, I get to do it all again on that side. Um, pain in the ass getting these bolts in. I, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, super pain in the ass getting these bolts in with that shim in. So don't put the shim in and then try to put the bolts in, take the shim out, put the bolts in, then put the shim in. Uh, otherwise, you're just wanting you're wanting to kill yourself because it's just a pain. Uh, final assembly on this is gonna suck. Um, the other thing is there's some bolts down on the inside, some nuts, one, two, three, four, one, two, four, five, six. So there's six total nuts that are way down in the bottom here that you have to get in here to do them and my fat hand won't fit. So I don't know how the hell I'm gonna do that. Um, I have one of these bendy, claw things which are really handy but i'm gonna have to figure out a way to get down in there to get that nut on so that i can then do the deed i don't know i may have to you know use my my uh i don't know i'm gonna have to come up with a different way of doing it it's gonna be an interesting exercise and frustration i think once it comes to final assembly but you know, once you get it on there, you'll never have to take it off again in theory. So that's where I'm at right now. This is what I've done today. It's been, it's getting hot and I got, I still haven't gone to the gym yet. So I, and I'm thirsty. So I'm going to go run and get some water, run to the gym and yeah, good times. Uh, you know, moving on slowly. This is a pain in the ass to work with. Uh, I'm pretty sure my number 30 and number 12 drill bits that I use to just do this one thing is now trash. So, uh, oh well, anyway, good times. Ow. Yep, managed to slice my thumb. Um, just the back of my thumb, right above the nail uh, on, I think it was actually on the stainless steel. I, I just, you know, something slipped or something like that. And next thing you know, hey, I'm bleeding. You're gonna bleed for your playing, guys. Uh, blood, sweat, and tears. It's not just money you're putting into this thing, but it might also be a biohazard. <laughs> uh, anyways, guys, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you jump over to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month, you can help support this thing and help me keep making them. Thanks.
So right here, I'm doing a little bit of drilling to get those holes lined up across that spar and that landing gear strut. And then as well as uh, going and getting the skins that go on either side of it. You need those skins in order to line up those four holes and drill them out. And you're gonna drill them uh, initially as a number 30 and then up to a number 12. That's what they look like as a number 12. Uh, something about those skins is you have two identical skins. There's not a left and a right. Uh, they're absolutely identical. When I put them on there though, I marked one as left and one as right, so they always go back to the same one. Even though those holes are in the same place, um, just for thoroughness, I went ahead and marked them. Uh, so there's that. Uh, nothing really difficult about that. It was kind of cool putting the skins on and you start to see you know, the buildup of the, of, the, of the bucket that you're gonna sit in, you know? So uh, every day it's looking a little bit more like an airplane. I can't wait to sit in and make airplane noises. But anyways, that was what was going on right there. Okay, so what you just finished watching me do was a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, basically, it's entirely around these heavy duty steel, um, landing gear support struts. Um, now these, uh, this one's just laying in here right now, but these will bolt across the top here to this spar. And a couple of these bolts actually bolt all the way through to the back spar. And then there's six bolts down below, as well as two right here and four right here. Uh, you have to put the skin on temporarily to bolt these four on because otherwise you're not going to know where the hole is. That was fun. Uh, and then you have to put uh, nut plates here because these are also going to be bolted down with just uh, uh, number four uh, bolts. And it's just a pain. A lot of putting everything in, you know, this floor, the floorboard that goes here, which I've got over there, uh, getting everything lined up, putting long bolts through all these holes to get everything lined up correctly, getting the shim in here to get it lined up correctly, do all the drilling at the number 30, burn out your drill bit because, well, why wouldn't you? Uh, go buy another couple, uh, as well as a couple number 12s, and then up drill everything from number 30 to number 12, uh, because that's what all of these are. And then, uh, then yeah, then put everything, or take everything apart, deburr, and get it ready to go to the next step. So, yeah, um, a lot. There's a lot in this step. And again, it's one of those things you're gonna put a bunch of stuff together, only do some work and take it all apart. And then once you get everything all done, that's it. That's the end of section 28. Uh, so now section 29 is what we're gonna begin in the next video. And that's where I'm gonna work on longer arms and getting them bent, I'm guessing, to match that curve. So that'll be interesting. Um, I'm going to have to bring my heavy duty vise out here. It's up in my wood shop right now. So I'm going to have to unbolt it, bring it out here and, and affix it to the table so I can do some of this work. Uh, previously, the last time I had to do longer on work, which was on the empennage, I did it all there. So uh, it didn't occur to me I was going to need to bring that out here, but going to need to bring that out here because uh, these have to have a curve to them. So that's going to be fun and, and a twist. That's the other thing. There's a twist involved too. So awesome. Um, this is, uh, this is coming about real quick. Uh, every single part that I add to the fuselage makes it that much more stiff. It seems real flimsy until you, you know, each, with each piece though, it kind of stiffens up a little more and more. And when I had all the skins on while I was drilling it, it was pretty stout. You know, it was pretty stout and it wasn't even like, I had like five Clecos as opposed to all the hundred or more uh, rivets in it. So. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, one of the other thing is, is, is the, with the floor plate in there and everything, it, that felt stiff too. One of the problems I had originally was, you know, I was putting it all together and I, I kind of put my hand on it. I'm like, oh God, you're going to be able to step right through this. It's super lightweight. No, once you get all that stuff in there, it's, it's pretty beefy. So anyways, looking forward to it. Going to get all this out. Going to get that done. It's going to be awesome. Thanks for sticking around, guys. Can't wait for the next one. Um, hopefully, I'll have another video this month. Uh, that sickness thing that I had kind of kind of put the kibosh on my coming out here. But uh, I'm excited. Uh, I did have uh, my buddy Lynn come by earlier today and took a look at what I was doing. He, even he was getting excited for me. So that's that's a good sign uh, when you got other builders come out and they, they get equally excited. So anyways, thanks a bunch if you guys like what I'm doing on this. If you click that like and subscribe button, it really helps my rankings. And uh, if you really want to help me share this video with somebody, maybe, maybe they want to build a plane. Anyways, thanks guys.